I say, Alice and I have been blessed. I mean, I've been doing this for about 40 years. We have been blessed that our ministry has taken us uh, all over the all over the United States of America, up into Canada, down all through Mexico, and into Central and South America, all over the Caribbean, in Africa, East and West Africa, all over in, in Europe, okay? As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to go back overseas in just a couple of months. And I've heard so many preachers call these Beatitudes, be happy attitudes. And while that may sound very cute, I, however, strongly believe that these would much more accurately be described as behaviors and attitudes yes. of the righteous. That's right. So if you want be attitudes, it's behavior and attitude of the righteous. Mm -hmm. You see, I believe that there is a significant, but often subtle, spiritual difference between being happy, being blessed, and being filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that the common use in the world may blur the lines between those things, but it's worth a look to try and understand the difference, all right? Mm -hmm. There was an Englishman um, who was known as the father of liberalism, okay? He was an English philosopher. His name was John Locke. He died in 1704. Let's put a time frame on this, right? He had been regarded as one of the most influential Enlightenment thinkers, and he had incredible influence on the American Revolution and on the Founding Fathers. Thomas Jefferson, for example, called Locke, along with Francis Bacon and Isaac Newton, the three greatest men that have ever lived, without any exception. Mm. Okay, words are important. Yes. Now, if those three Enlightenment thinkers are to one of, if not the most influential, important founders of the United States, where, I wonder, does that leave, in his mind, Jesus Christ? Amen. Remember, we started talking about this as about a matter of relevance. Yeah. Yeah. And it would appear that while you know, he, he thought Jesus was a good moral teacher, he wasn't really relevant to the, to the life of him. Right? So Locke wrote in, 18, in 1689, and I'm, this is a direct quote, Civil interest I call life, liberty, health, and indolence of body, and the possession of outward things. And in, in 1693 he wrote, The highest perfection of intellectual nature lies in a careful and constant pursuit of true and solid happiness. Mm. Now, Thomas Jefferson, along with Franklin, John Adams, Robert Livingston, and Robert Sherman, would immortalize those thoughts in the writing of the American Constitution in 1776. Pursuit of happiness. Okay? Because that's what it says in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Mm -hmm. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want to say happiness is a circumstance. Blessed is a condition. Mm. Right? We talk about happy birthday. That's, a, that's right, a circumstance. Right. Happy hour. <laughs> <clears throat> Those are flitting and momentary circumstances. The constitutional idea of happiness is a self-focused celebration of the human potential, apart from the saving grace of Jesus Christ. The Lord, who was absent in Jefferson's list of the greatest men, is then considered, while a good teacher on morals, to be otherwise irrelevant. Mm. The Word of God promises blessings to those who, who has commanded, pursue righteousness, love, and peace. That's what it says in the Word. We're to pursue righteousness, love, and peace. Not happiness. The word happy comes from, from hap, chance, or fortune. That has its root in wealth and riches. Blessed comes from a word that means to consecrate, to make holy, Mm -hmm. And that has its root in a word that means to mark with blood. Wow. From the word blotham, which means blood. Mm. So think about that. The word happy comes from luck. Bliss comes from the shedding of blood. Yeah, it's a big difference. Boy. Joy comes from being a fruit of the Holy Spirit and from hearing the word of God. Mm. That's what John the Baptist said 
when it was speaking of Jesus, and he said, he who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made full. John 3, 29, hearing God's word, hearing God's voice will bring that blessing into your life. It'll bring the fullness of joy into your life. Obedience, hearing God's word and obeying God's word brings the fullness of blessing into your life. Read Deuteronomy 28 yes. in any version, I promise. Yes. Okay? So, so I said, we, I, wanna, I wanna make sure that we're clear on that before we start, and we're gonna look at each one of the Beatitudes, Beatitudes. one by one, and we're gonna look at them in depth. But you need to understand, they're not about trying to make you happy. They are trying to make you blessed, okay? And they are there for God's instruction that you have that abundant, joy-filled life that He came to give you, and that you, living that life, would be a faithful witness to the promise of God the Father's love. Look